Hi guys, this is John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and of course I'm here with Sarah. And we just got done with the SHOT Show 2014 Media Day at the Range. And for those of you guys that saw our videos from last year, you know that uh, it's basically a time for media personnel to be able to go out to the range, talk to different manufacturers, and shoot whatever their latest and greatest stuff is. And uh, was it uh, fun, tiring, or uh, all of the above? All of the above plus cold and windy. Um, from what I understand, they're not as cold as last year, so I shouldn't be complaining. Um, but it was a good time. Um, saw some familiar faces and, and met some new ones. It was really good. A really good time. Last year was incredibly cold and the wind was blowing really well and so it made it really miserable to be out on the firing line. But uh, this year it was a whole lot better. We got a whole lot of stuff done. Uh, we didn't get as much done as we had hoped to, but really you only have so much energy to mm -hmm. tromp up and down that range and uh, see all that there is to see. Well, a couple of uh, things that we did see. First and foremost, we uh, made it over to Glock's setup, and they have two new handguns that they have unveiled at the SHOT Show this year. And the first one was the G41. Now, the G41, if you think about it, is just a long slide version of the Glock 21. Now, this is also a Gen 4 pistol, so it has the replaceable back straps. But if you took a G21, and you put a long slide on it, that's what you have with the G41. And we both got to shoot it. Uh, Sarah, what did you think of it? Um, well, you know, we shot both this one and the 42, which is we're going to talk about here in a minute. Um, I just, me personally, because I'm a girl and I have little hands, I personally did not prefer the 45, but that's my personal pref preference because then I got to shoot the little 380. So, um, however, it was very sleek in design. The trigger was so sensitive. Um, kind of took me my surprise one time. Uh, I just wasn't even ready for it, and and there it was. So, uh, if you carry 45s, definitely, definitely something to look into. Now, of course, I carry a Glock 21 as a regular part of my everyday duties. So shooting the Glock 41, it really didn't seem like it was a vast difference between my 21. Uh, so it, of course, we didn't get to shoot them side by side. I really wish Glock would have brought out a couple of 21s. That way we could shoot them side by side and see if there really was a perceived difference in recoil or a muzzle rise. But right now, I can't say that there was a massive difference. Um, however, generally, a longer sight radius will give you a little bit more accurate handgun. And uh, sometimes that longer slide can help with that muzzle flip or that longer barrel can, can reduce a little of that muzzle flip. So we'll see if uh, we get some more time on the Glock 41, how we feel about it. I really like that it has the replaceable back straps on it. Uh, you can put that longer beaver tail back strap on it and really get a, a little bit more customizable grip uh, for your specific hand. Now the mm -hmm. Glock 42 is mm -hmm. really the one that was producing all the uh, murmurs prior to the SHOT Show. Uh, the Glock 42 is a single stack 380 slimline subcompact Glock. <laughs> it has now surpassed the Glock 26 as the smallest Glock ever made. And really this Glock is aimed squarely towards <laughs> Sarah's demographic. It was specifically designed for it. So why don't you tell them how you perceive the Glock 42? Um, I, first of all, I liked it, the fact that it was small and compact. I really thought of all the places where I could personally conceal carry, not just on my waist under a great big sweatshirt or a great big coat. It kind of opened up um, my possibilities and my options as a smaller framed individual. Um, it also gets away from us moms who carry kids on our hips and kind of really hampers with that whole thing. Um, I liked that it was, um, well, it was accurate. Uh, I, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, it was the recoil, it, I mean, it's the 38. There's nothing there. It was, it was fun to shoot. I enjoyed it, and like I said, I preferred it over the 45, but that's just me. 
Now, personally, I would have preferred if they brought out the Glock 42 in a 9mm instead of the 380, but speaking with some of the Glock reps out there, it seems that Glock was really aiming for the female or smaller statute shooter, and so they went with the lighter recoiling cartridge. Uh, that's not to say that in the future you may not see a single stack 9mm Glock come out, but for now we're looking at the 380 cartridge, and it is a single stack magazine, so you're really only getting six rounds in that magazine. So it's something you got to consider, but it definitely was smaller, more mm -hmm. compact, thinner mm -hmm. than the Glock 26. It really, for a male shooter or a law enforcement professional, it really is aimed squarely at that backup gun market. So it may be something to consider if you're looking for a gun that you would want to carry when you normally would not carry a gun. Now, we didn't spend a whole lot of time on handguns because mainly we're a channel that covers long range precision shooters, but we did pass Springfield Armory's booth and I really, I'm a 1911 fan, so I couldn't help myself but go in and take a look at their new Range Master pistol. Springfield Armory re released their 1911 Range Master in 9mm, and so we went and took a shot, and Sarah, what'd you think of it? Honestly, um... Uh, you know, I had a Springfield um, XDM subcompact that I have recently passed on down, and I'm in the in the market for a new handgun. Um, just haven't found one that has spoken to me yet. And really, it it kind of it reminded me of my old handgun. It was just not as fat and thick. Um, if I remember correctly, in the one I'm thinking about, I believe I did not like the grips on it. Mm -hmm. if, is that the one I'm yep. thinking of? Okay. And that's because, again, I have little girl hands. So um, that was, again, I have always had an issue with finding the handgun that fits me. It takes me up to a year to find the one that I like. Now, the uh, 9mm Range Master, I found it a really nice handgun to shoot because I'm used to shooting 1911s. Uh, having a 1911 that just has that lower recoil 9mm cartridge uh, would make for a really good competition gun for me. It worked like a 1911 should, it felt like a 1911, so really it's almost like there's not much to comment on it. It did have thin uh, regular wood grips. Uh, and I usually replace those on my 1911s with something like uh, a Pacmar grip. So that wasn't so much of an issue for me, but it was an accurate pistol. I was able to shoot it relatively quickly and it functioned without problems. So if you're looking for a 9mm 1911, you may give the Range Master a uh, look. Now we cruised on past the uh, pistols and one of the rifles that really caught our eye was Miller Precision Arms mm -hmm. was set up with their 300 Win Mag semi-automatic rifle. Now this is an AR platform mm -hmm. that's totally redesigned to be able to accept the 300 Win Mag cartridge. Now you guys have seen us uh, post little blurbs about the Nemo Arms. Overwatch rifles or the Omen rifles before uh, and they are chambered in 300 Win Mag and this is similar to that but in talking to the Miller Precision Arms people they really wanted to keep this rifle closer to what a standard AR-15 or standard AR-10 type setup is. They went ahead and kept the top charging handle and they tried to design the rifle to accept as many AR-15 and large frame standard AR parts as possible. Uh, they even went so far is to make sure that the upper receivers use either Armalite or DPMS barrel threads. Uh, you can choose whichever one suits you best so that later on down the line if you want to put uh, your own rail system or you want to change up the handguard on it, you're not stuck with a proprietary thread pitch. You can put whatever you want on there. Uh, the Magazines are proprietary magazines because, to my knowledge, there really are very few options out there for 300 Win Mag magazines for semi-automatic rifles. So that's one of the few drawbacks. They are polymer magazines, but the really nice thing about the Miller Precision Arms magazines are they design the overall length of the magazine to be able to accept 208 grain AMAX or 220 grain CR Match King bullets 
seeded out in that cartridge to meet the lands in the barrel. So they were really thinking and they were really trying to design this rifle towards precision shooters. Now unfortunately the media day at the range is not set up so that you can do any kind of accuracy testing and Miller only brought along uh, Remington soft point mm. ammunition so it really it was not something that was designed to test the accuracy limits of these rifles. But what it did allow us to test is how the rifle felt mm -hmm. and how it operated and how the recoil felt. Uh, Sarah, what did you think? <laughs> you got a chance to uh, put a couple of rounds down range I with the rifle. I did. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but I'm peeking at our notes here and I saw what we were talking about next and my eyes just kind of lit up. Um, it was so much fun. It Honestly, it looked so intimidating, but it wasn't. It was so much fun to shoot. Um, and as John was saying, it was hard to, to gain, you know, we had the crossman going with accuracy and all that stuff, but it was, um, it, it was great. I enjoyed it so much. Um, I'm used to my bolt gun, but I, I liked it, so can't complain. Well, one of the things that I really liked about it was when I got behind the rifle, once you got the magazine in and closed the bolt, it functioned just like any other AR you're used to shooting. And while I was shooting it, I really, it didn't jump out mm -hmm. at me as a recoil monster. The rifle that we were shooting mm -hmm. had a 22 inch braked barrel on it. And while the concussion of the round going off through that break was fairly violent, the recoil itself was very similar to the 308. Uh, as you guys know, I've been spending quite a bit of time behind a Mega Arms Ma 10 chambered in 308. So I'm very used to the way the recoil on an AR-10 or a Ma 10 or any of those class rifles feels. And this really was not a punishing rifle. I wouldn't have a problem mm -hmm. sitting down behind the rifle and shooting 50, 60 rounds, 100 rounds in a match and not come away from it thinking I just got beat up. Now, we didn't get to do any accuracy testing, but the barrels that Miller Precision Arms uses are Krieger barrels, Bartling, or Mike Rock barrels. So the accuracy potential in the barrel is there. And that combined with the ability to load those match bullets long in that magazine to be able to get your seating depth wherever you want really bodes well for the accuracy potential of the system. So we will definitely be talking to them when we get onto the show floor about getting one of their rifles in to actually do some longer range testing and do some accuracy testing. But overall, it was a really fun weapon system to shoot. It has an adjustable gas system. It is a direct impingement rifle, so it operates like your standard AR-15 or AR-10. Uh, there's no gas piston system or anything like that in it. And it is an adjustable gas system, so if you decide to put a suppressor on it, uh, you can dial that gas system down so you're not beating the internal components up. But overall, a really nice shooting rifle, so we're looking forward to a little bit more time with that. Now, uh, once we got done with the uh, Miller Precision Arms rifle, we went over to Ashbury Precision Ordnance, and uh, I think Sarah had a blast <laughs> with the APO guys. I did. <laughs> they have one of their uh, their 338 systems out there, and they had a suppressor on it, and so it was a really good chance to get Sarah behind a 338 that wouldn't beat her up too bad. What would you think about that? I loved it. Um, the guys were great. Um, we were what, shooting at 875? Yeah, I think the long target was at eight, so 870 or so. There's just something about um, hitting 875 like four times in a row that just... Makes you feel a little tingly inside. Um, and this was no joke today. The wind was up, so uh, she was holding somewhere between one and a half and two mils for wind mm -hmm. uh, as it gusted up and down. Yeah, and, and luckily I didn't have to do any of that stuff. You know, the, the guys there had figured all that out and just basically told me what to hold, and I adjusted all the little parts and adjusted the, the stock and the cheek rest and uh, basically, you know, sent it when it was time. Um, and there's, you know, when you're just standing there and you can hear the people talking about about you and you are just around you and you and you hear the, psst, and that's it, and then you have to, and it's you can't hear the ding because it's so far away and it's just a really good time. <laughs> I enjoyed myself. There, there wasn't a lot of recoil to it, but there was a little bit of a push, wasn't there? Yeah, um, there's a couple times I actually knocked the hat off my head. That's the bad thing about being a girl and it's not my gun is that. And the distance between the scope and, and myself, I don't like shooting with a hat, but today was not an option um, because the wind was so bad. That was the only way to keep my hair out of my face. Uh, so that's that. Meh. 
That's how it is. Well, she got done shooting it, and APO had their own video crew there that they were interviewing people for the APO's uh, media, and uh, they actually pulled Sarah aside and uh, asked her some questions about the system and how she liked it. So basically, the points I gave them were that um, if you had limited funds and you wanted this certain uh, 338, right? Is that what I'm talking about? Yeah. 338, that you would, um, the components were all adjustable so that if you had limited funds but multiple shooters, you could adjust it in between each shooter. Um, so that, that, that was the really good thing. And again, I mean, you can save your hearing at the end of the day. I liked that part too. So what Sarah's saying is, go ahead and tell your wife that you can save money <laughs> no, Sarah, by not, no. buying an no. APO 338. We are not responsible so. for any divorces that are going to happen due to this video. So, so just, I'm, I'm uh, taking her word to heart. So. So. Oh, guys, you see what you just did. <sighs> but uh, it was a it was a really fun rifle to shoot. Of course, I got behind it and sent some rounds down range. But the the real story at APO is they now have got their Savage chassis out. So you guys that have been complaining about not enough support for the Savage rifles, uh, APO now offers you chassis systems for the Savage. And of course, their chassis systems are modular, so you can start out on the low end with the Super Sport, and you can build it up mm -hmm. to a full blown carbon fiber chassis if you wish. And again, we'll talk more with them when we get actually out on the show floor. So once we got done with uh, APO, I slid over to the Saco booth or Saco area and they had one of their M10s set up with the new Burris XTR2 scopes. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of you guys asked me to check out the new Burris line and I tell you what, they have done a world of good with these XTR scopes. The XTR2 is apparently what they're calling their next generation of XTR scopes and they really listen to what precision rifle shooters want. Uh, the scope that we got to shoot was the 4 to 20 power, and it is a front focal plane scope. It has either a minute angle reticle and minute angle turrets, or mill reticle and mill turrets, so you can get it either way. Uh, it is illuminated, and the one that we shot was the 4 to 20, but they also have a 5 to 25 power. The scope worked very well. The turrets are not super, super precise on the clicks. There's just a tiny bit of mush to them sometimes when I dial it in. I would have to really make sure that I had it seated on the tick mark. You could go a little past or come a little short on the tick. But that is not unheard of for scopes that are trying to come in at this price range. And this is a demo model. We'll have to wait and see when we actually get one of the um, retail models in our hands to see how the turrets really feel on them. But overall, I was fairly impressed seeing what Burris has previously offered and seeing their new offerings specifically for the tactical rifle guys. Now, the price point is fairly reasonable. For the 5 to 25 power scope, they're looking at about a $1,200 price point. So, fairly good price point for the features that they're offering. And we'll uh, get you guys a little bit more information as we go into the show on those. Uh, the next thing, we went down and we located TACCON, and some of you guys that are big AR shooters have seen the, the videos out for the TACCON 3MR trigger. Now the 3MR trigger is a three position trigger for an AR-15 or AR-10 rifle. And what it allows you to do is it has the standard safe position on the trigger, or it has a single shot position where you have a regular four, four and a half pound trigger pull and it's supposed to be a match grade trigger. And then you have a third position which is what they call their positive reset position. And what this is supposed to allow you to do is send down an extremely high rate of fire close to what a fully automatic rifle is capable of doing. Now, We've seen the videos, we heard all the stuff online about the trigger, but I was really curious as to how the trigger works and how it operates to the shooter's perspective. So we took some time, we talked to Mike, the designer of the trigger, and he explained how it worked to us, and we spent some time putting some rounds downrange. I put two magazines through it, which is far short from what you need to be comfortable with this kind of setup. But it gave me a chance to see that the trigger really isn't anything smoke and mirrors. There's no black magic to it. What you get is you get a single fire position, which operates like most of the other AR triggers on the market. And then 
in the positive reset position, you have a very short, very crisp four to four and a half pound trigger. So you're able to still manipulate the trigger and firing single shots with every pull of the trigger, but you're able to do so at a very, very high rate of fire. Now you see the videos on uh, TACCON's website, you can see that some of their trained guys are able to put rounds down range very, very fast. I wasn't able to get that fast. I was probably hovering about 120 rounds per minute, somewhere in that range, but it was still a higher rate of fire than I normally shoot with just a match trigger in an AR. What we really like to do and what we'll be talking to TACCON about is seeing if we can get one of their triggers and one of the other single stage match triggers that we've worked with and shoot them side by side on a shot timer and see what kind of uh, rate of fire I can put down range actually with a timer to tell us if there's a difference between the two other than just trying to go by sound, by feel, or by the video frames. So hopefully we'll be able to get that locked on and you'll be able to see that in the future. Last but not least, we stopped by Surefire and we took a look at some of the suppressors that they had on the line, both the regular SOCOM in 7.62 and then the SOCOM Mini in 5.56. And if you guys are looking for a good suppressor that you can share between multiple rifles, then the Surefire SOCOM is a really, really good option. We shot it on one of the AI rifles there and we were shooting it out uh, to 500 yards, I think, which is what they had it dialed in for, and uh, works very well, no complaints whatsoever. Now, Surefire advertises an almost perfect return to zero when you remove and reinstall the suppressor, and hopefully a little bit later this year, we're going to be able to get one of those in, and we're going to be able to actually test that claim and see how well it does return to zero. Well, once we got done playing with the SOCOM and 7.62 on the AI, we switched over and grabbed one of the SOCOM minis on a regular AR and uh, sent some rounds down range with that. And the SOCOM mini worked really, really well. You do sacrifice a little bit of maximum suppression to get that nice compact package. But what it does is it allows you to bring that shot signature down to a point where it's not going to seriously damage your hearing if you're in a law enforcement role and you have to deploy the rifle without the added hearing protection. But with a suppressor that small a volume, what you often get is you get a lot of blowback out of the rifle into your face when you're shooting a direct impingement rifle. I took the rifle equipped with SOCOM Mini and I put a really quick magazine through it and I really didn't have any problems with the gas causing my eyes to tear up. I was still able to see just fine wearing nothing more than regular uh, eyeglasses is eye protection or regular sunglasses. Uh, so I didn't get that gas seeping under the glasses and tearing up my eyes. So I was really impressed that you can shoot that suppressor with a fairly high volume of fire and not get your eyes all fogged up with the uh, gases coming out of the action. Overall, there was a lot to see out at the media day at the range. We did our best to hit everything that we think would be something that you guys would be interested in. Uh, we have a long week ahead of us hitting the booths at the show and going from manufacturer to manufacturer, and there we'll be able to get more details. Media day at the range is a really loud, really congested place. It's very difficult to actually talk to reps and get good details about their products. It's even more difficult to actually get that on video. Mm -hmm. So we generally save that until we can actually go visit them at their booths mm -hmm. in the show itself. Uh, Sarah was a great sport <laughs> all day. Um, I could tell that she was really getting worn out towards the end of it, uh, but uh, she kept up a lot of the footage that you guys have seen in this video. Uh, she was responsible for shooting, so she did a really good job, and she'll be assisting operating the camera, and we'll get her in front of the camera as much as we can over the next week as well. So thanks for watching this video. If you guys like it, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel because we'll be putting out new videos all this week. We'll be putting them out as often as we can. We have a really tight schedule, so I can't promise you that what volume of videos we're going to get up, but if we miss anything this week, as soon as we get back home, we're going to be putting the videos up as well. So please stay tuned, and until next time, get out and shoot! <laughs>